Good evening. It is so wonderful to be gathered together on this special holy evening when we celebrate Christ's birth. The waiting is finally over and we are gathered here in a spirit of joy and peace knowing that God's presence is among us. Thank you for joining us this evening for this holy night, this service when we hear again the story of Christ's birth among us and we are reminded of God's presence, God's love, God's grace here with us even now. Uh, We have uh, just one announcement that might be that if you are worshiping with us for the first time and you would like to have a bulletin or have a guide with you to sing along with the hymns or to read any of the liturgies, we do welcome you to go to our website to find that at stmarksumcsd.org or you can find it in your messenger email if you are signed up for our emails. Um, Otherwise, we pray that you might be uh, gathered uh, with friends and family in a virtual way in this time together, that we might feel the presence of one another together, even in this place, as we might be distanced this evening, but that God's Spirit might bind us to one another as we hear this story, as we remember God's presence, as we celebrate this good news of Christ with us. Will you join me in our opening prayer? Living God, on this holy night we gather to stand with shepherds amazed at your glory, to sing with angels rejoicing in your work, to wait with Joseph trusting in your promise, to sit with Mary cradling your love. May the good news of this night inspire us to tell the world of our great joy, for to us is born a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. Glory and praise to you, our God, Emmanuel. Amen.
we light the Christ candle to symbolize God's promise fulfilled. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to all on whom his favor rests. Blessed, Blessed be, be the name, the name of, of the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus, our brother, strong and good, was humbly born in a stable, and the friendly beasts around him stood. Jesus, our brother, strong and good, I never died. He shaggy and brown. I'm carrying his mother up hill and down. I carried his mother to Bethlehem town. I saw the donkey shaggy and brown. I said the cow all white and red. I gave him my manger for his bed. I gave him hay to pillow his head. I said the cow all white and red. I said the sheep with curly horn. I gave him my wool for his blanket warm. He wore my coat on Christmas morn. I said the sheep with curly horn. I said the dove from the rafters high. I cooed him to sleep that he should not cry. We cooed him to sleep, my maid and I. I said the dove from the rafters high. The salt of peace by some good spell. In the stable dark were glad to tell of the gift they gave Emmanuel. The gift they gave Emmanuel. Good evening and welcome to Children's Time. Tonight is Christmas Eve, the night we've all been waiting for. The past few weeks, I've been building a nativity set. If you've missed it, don't worry. If you go to our website on the Young People's page, you can build your very own nativity set. And there's a fun video to go with the Bible story and questions to help you build the story yourself. It's a great activity to do with your family or siblings whenever you have time the next few days. Now, if you look at my nativity, you'll remember that the very first week we added in some grass and a little structure. This was to remind us that Christmas is coming and we needed to start to get ready. The second week I added a manger and some animal friends right here. Uh, the scripture reminded us that you are one of God's lambs and God is your shepherd. When you are scared or hurt, God wants to take care of you. The third week I added in a shepherd. The shepherd reminded us that just like a shepherd prepares the way for their sheep, we must prepare ourselves and our hearts for Jesus. Last Sunday, I added in Mary and Joseph and an angel right up here. Um, 
the angel told Mary and Joseph the good news that they would have a baby named Jesus. This is a reminder to us of the good news we share in our lives, just like the angel shared the good news with Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds. Tonight, we finally get to add in what we've all been waiting for, baby Jesus. Why do we get so excited for Jesus to be born? It's because God loves, loved us so much that he sent Jesus to earth to live and be fully human with us. Jesus is fully human and fully God and shows all of us how to live in order to bring heaven to earth. This is one of the most special things that has happened for Christians. And so we get to celebrate it once every year on Christmas. Mary and Joseph and the angels and shepherds all probably felt such a sense of joy that Jesus had been born. Joy is when you feel so good in your heart and in your body that you want to share it and tell everyone all about the joy you feel. Tonight, I want you to remember a joyful time you've had. An example, I feel joy when I see a beautiful sunset over the ocean or when my kitties snuggle up with me when I'm at home cozy in pajamas or when I get to spend time with all of the people I love. Remember that this joy is how we feel about Jesus being born and God being with us on earth. Tonight, the moment we have been waiting for has arrived. We joyfully get to place baby Jesus in the manger. Amen. <laughs> walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David in his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thank you. 
a shoot shall come out from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. Our third reading comes from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greeting, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of a greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God.
In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. 
But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of humans, but of God. And, and the, the Word, word became, became flesh and lived among us, us and, and we have seen his, his glory, the glory as of a parent's only son, full of grace and truth. Let us pray. Loving God, with gratitude we come this night, asking that our ears and our hearts might be again opened to receive this story of your gift, of your son. We pray that as we hear these words and as we ponder them in our hearts, that you would transform us as well, 
and to the disciples whom you have called us to be. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in April of 2019, five days after we celebrated Easter, the movie Avengers Endgame was released in theaters. As the final chapter of Marvel's Infinity Saga, it brought in $1.2 billion worldwide on just its opening weekend. And now it holds the record for top grossing movie of all time, even over Avatar or Star Wars or Titanic. There are actually 25 superhero movies that have grossed over $750 million, 14 of which have brought in over a billion. Apparently, we love a good superhero story. And why wouldn't we? They usually involve a relatable character discovering an otherworldly ability within themselves that becomes a useful tool in overpowering evil and restoring order for their community or for the world. As we enter into their story, we feel immense satisfaction as they stop enemies in their tracks, regain control by sheer strength or incredible ingenuity, and protect the vulnerable from utter destruction. They let us see the world with clear definitions for good guys and bad guys. And in the end, good always triumphs over evil. When it comes to superheroes and the universe of comics in general, I know virtually nothing. So I'm wandering into dangerous territory here a little bit. But I think that my first memorable encounter was through the show, the 90s show, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. And part of Superman's story that has cemented itself in my mind is his unique natal narrative. Born in another world, but sent by his parents to Earth so that he wouldn't be destroyed, destroyed along with his planet, he lands in small town Kansas, where he is adopted by a compassionate couple and raised as if he was their own, learning to use his unique powers for good. Well, with the rare occurrence this past Monday of the alignment of Jupiter and Saturn forming again the Christmas star after several centuries, I've been thinking about how much Jesus' birth sounds like the beginning of an epic superhero story. Fantastical details of heavenly messengers, a virgin conceiving a child by divine intervention, and even a star in the sky that seems to defy its own orbit, stopping over the place of his birth. These details of this otherworldly son sent to live on earth surely suggest that the life to follow will be something significant. Certainly the prophets set us up to envision Jesus as our hero, the savior of the nation of Israel, the liberator of the people from oppression, the comforter of the suffering, the restorer of peace. His authority shall grow in the land, they promised, and his kingdom will stand forever. And so it was that Jesus, the Son of God, was born to us in a stable, to the young couple of little means, burdened by a complicated conception and an untimely journey to the town of Bethlehem. And while the shepherds celebrated the birth of their Messiah, witnessing his coming as the generations before them had foretold, Jesus' power, his authority, would never ultimately manifest as we expected. His life didn't result in a story of domination and control. It didn't leave us with a narrative of untouchable strength and invulnerability. There was no satisfying, all-encompassing overturning of oppressive power and restoration of the righteous. No clear triumph of good over evil, of light dispelling the darkness, or at least not in the way that the disciples and early followers had hoped, not in the way the people of the Jewish faith had envisioned. They dreamed of the superhero ending and wound up with an empty tomb. The evangelist John wrote, He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. Our inherent nature seems not to have evolved so much since the days of Jesus. It seems that our greatest desires are still to eliminate chaos and fear, to subdue adversaries of all kinds, 
and to feel a consistent sense of autonomy or control over our lives or our experiences, to feel a sense of God-like power, a superhuman existence. And perhaps this is what makes the incarnation of God and Jesus so confusing to us. Because Jesus shows up imbued with omnipotent strength and authority, but never uses it to subdue or to control or to manipulate. In complete divine wisdom and grace, he comes not to conquer as we hoped, but to teach us the ordinary, inherently human, divine strength already within us a strength that cannot express itself in power over, but only power with. A strength that doesn't force elimination, but cuts through, pervades, undermines, and dismantles. A strength that cannot be stockpiled by an individual or a group, but that thrives in relationship and the connections between us. A strength that doesn't prevent suffering, but fortifies us as we journey through from season to season, from wilderness to promised land. John's text tells us that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. I think every other year that I have read this text, what I heard was that the light overcomes all darkness, but that isn't actually what it says. God's promise was not that through Jesus, God would eliminate all darkness. In fact, Jesus himself tells us that even in our most faithful discipleship, we will face suffering and persecution. But it is this gift of light that goes with us. It is this promise that no darkness is too deep for God's love to reach us that is the good news of Jesus. This year has pulled no punches in showing us how little control we actually have over our environment, our health, or even one another. We've experienced wildfires and hurricanes, unjustified killings and rage-fueled protests, rising of unemployment and widening economic disparity, crises of healthcare, of education, of small businesses, Isolation, disconnection, fear, despair. And over 1,700,000 people worldwide have died from COVID-19. Over 320,000 in the United States alone. We have been separated from one another at the most critical and heartbreaking hours. We have seen hatred kindled and the embodiment of evil incited by fear. And we have seen healthcare workers standing in for loved ones in the most sacred spaces with the dying. We have seen organizations developing in response to urgent needs for financial support, for rent or utilities or for food. Even CCSA on our corner has given groceries to a record number of families over the last nine months and continues to provide for the most vulnerable among us this critical service. And even those of a particular generation who never thought they would use computers to stay connected now share in Bible study, the sacrament of Holy Communion, or simply fellowship together, providing life-giving connection via Zoom. God's gift to us in Christ wasn't the power to ourselves transcend or conquer the discomforts or brutalities of our world. In fact, it was the opposite. It was modeling for us the ultimate act of love, which is to set aside whatever power one has to control or subdue or manipulate, to become fully, gracefully present with those who feel lost to chaos, overwhelmed by fear, broken by oppression or despairing in hunger to become a source of light in the darkest wilderness, to share the weight of impossible burdens. God's love given for us, demonstrated to us in Jesus, teaches us not how to be unaffected by or to escape the wounds of the world, 
but how to use our God-given power of love to slowly, patiently, even at times painfully, bring healing by choosing to be present to offer ourselves to the work of transformation. God's love in Jesus teaches us to withstand the wearying forces of fear and division and prejudice by trusting in the power of our love for each other to undermine the fragile defenses of human status, wealth, and ego to eventually give way to a stabilizing, sustaining freedom found in our mutual flourishing as many members of one body. This Christmas, perhaps more than any other, we may more fully understand the gift of God given to us as God chooses to be present to us, wrapped in flesh, tending to our pain, seeing us and knowing us fully, welcoming us to the table of abundance to share in the joy and fellowship of life together. As we continue to long for the comforts and blessings of being gathered with friends and loved ones, incarnate with one another, may we be drawn closer in compassion with the refugee and the orphan, with the widow and widower, with those who long for food and shelter, those who long for comfort and healing, and those who have been excluded and exiled. And may the example of our Redeemer, choosing to forsake his divine privilege to teach us this love, remind us that the power of his light can permeate all grief, injustice, violence, and hate, all illness, greed, corruption, and fear, to sustain us in love as we continue to hope and work for God's kingdom come. This night, may we celebrate that our God never ceases to be present to us, among us, and within us, providing strength in our weariness, hope in our despair, and grounding peace in every uncertainty through the eternal light given to us this night and always in Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in prayer. God of wondrous love, it is with joy we celebrate this holy night when you broke through the darkness and brought unending light into the world. You, who created all that is, chose to be born into humble means among the smells of your creation. Dry straw, the excrement of animals, the sweat of Mary's brow. You, O oh Lord, who gives breath to all humanity, took your first breath as a vulnerable baby born to a young woman living in an occupied country. You, the Messiah, cried for milk to nourish your tiny body. You, wonderful counselor, listened to the assuring words of a father who called you his own. God of our heart, hear our prayers tonight as we pray for those who are ill with COVID and separated from loved ones. We pray for their healing and their family and friends who wait for them to return home. We pray for essential workers who struggle to stay healthy while tending to those who need their skills and abilities. God of strength, continue to renew their bodies and their minds as they work in these difficult times. We pray for those who grieve loss of a loved one, loss of direction, loss of financial stability. God of comfort, be with them. For those who are without homes this night, show us, those who are sheltered, how to build communities so that all your people are safe and protected from the harsh elements that surround them. 
Lord, we pray for those who are hungry. Lord, continue teaching us how to feed those who search for their daily bread so they will be satisfied. And for those who are ill, whether in mind, body, or spirit, God, give us resources to provide healing to the sick, to the lame, and to provide comfort for the poor in spirit. Holy God, we pray for those who are grief-stricken. Give us hearts that respond to their needs with or without words. And for those who are tired of fighting for justice in an unjust system, give us the compassion to take up their cause, whether it is by marching, sitting, or fighting for their freedoms. For those, Lord, who feel they don't need help, give us the wisdom to listen to your spirit and how we are called to love them. God of abiding love, we are grateful that you continue to love us in our stubbornness, our faithfulness, and in our uncertainties. Your birth and life show us how to live a full life of faith and justice in a world riddled with death, betrayal, and grief. Open our eyes and our hearts to those in need around us and to our own needs as well. We pray this night the prayer that you taught us, Jesus, as we begin, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This evening, St. Mark's is taking an offering. We are receiving your gifts for the ongoing work of the Community Christian Service Agency. CCSA. This agency serves San Diego community members from two locations here in Claremont and in Pacific Beach. They provide food, clothing, and other resources for those who struggle. They don't take a census of their clients. They just offer what they can. Your gifts and your offerings will support their ongoing care for the needs of our neighbors. St. Mark's has already designated $2,000 for matching funds for this Christmas Eve offering. So whether you have mailed a check or you give online, please indicate that it is for CCSA and they will receive your offering of love. Thank you.
Friends, on this most holy of nights, we are so grateful that the light has come into the world again, that the darkness is forever scattered by this gift of Christ's light in our lives. It is a familiar tradition in this church and many churches around the world on this night to celebrate that the light comes to us but is not ours alone to hold on to or keep, but ours to share with others. And as we might normally be passing this light one from another, candle to candle, we pray that wherever you may be, wherever you may be uh, worshiping, whatever time it might be that you are entering into this space, that you might feel that this light is being passed to you. You might light a candle in your own home as well, but we celebrate especially this night that the light of Christ has come and that it is our gift to share with others.
Friends, as we go from this place this night, I pray it is with joy and with hope, trusting that God has brought us this light in Jesus Christ, the journeys with us wherever we go, into any darkness, into any joy, into any concern, into any celebration, that Christ's presence is ever with us, fortifying us, giving us courage, and bringing us peace, trusting that God's presence will guide us and go with us wherever we go. Friends, Merry Christmas. May we go in peace.